Thank you, President. Colleagues, the proposed 6.5% increase on the European Parliament budget for 2011 is yet another indication of how far this House has departed from the real world and the interests of its voters. How can we explain to our constituents in northern month times, let alone in times of crisis, that the total cost they are paying for each one of us exceeds £2 million per year? How can we tell them that if they want a high-level parliament, as some take pride of, this is the bill they have to pay, face? How do we explain to all those who are losing their jobs that we, the MEPs, need more staff because of the Lisbon Treaty? Or that the office holders in this parliament need an increase in their allowances because they work harder? The 15% unemployed youth in the UK, or worse, the 45% unemployed youth in Spain, will not be able to see how this increase will help them get a job. Many of them are fairly well educated. They only lack job opportunities. I, frankly, would not be able to respond this question to them. Can somebody explain to my voters how the fact that this parliament has two seats, one in Brussels and one in Strasbourg, will help them pay the mortgage, feed their children and educate them? Because this is a big part of the two million cost that I spoke about before. As regards the Commission, it is all very nice to talk about noble objectives such as investing in youth and education, promoting the study of languages and fostering innovation for the economic development and job creation in Europe. But the Auditor's report gives no comfort on how European Union funds are being spent, nor do the outstanding commitments show the EU is very good at planning. The EU Sorry, needs to walk the talk. Andresen, more, more, no well, proposal well, for any increase in budget should had, be tolerated. Yeah, this is, this is, Andresen, you had, you had more than half a minute longer than you should have done. Thanks so much. Thank you for your comments.